Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Hopefully you guys are all having a fantastic Tuesday. And today we have so, so much to just discuss, go over, keep you guys informed and updated on what's going on with Holmes Racing, not only with the 18T, but also the 22C. The last couple of videos on the channel have all been kind of relating to Carly's incident and the end of our Freedom Cup, which was the 4th of July race we ran at the Cottage Grove Speedway. We are not necessarily like transitioning out of that that is still a part of our current situation but now it's kind of talk our time to talk about our game plan moving forward and when our team will be back on track so with the roller coaster that we've been on and the ups and downs we've been experiencing uh, all year i wanted to now tell you guys where are we at with the two weeks we've been off as we've been like trying to regroup and get back on track and that starts with the car that we wrecked on night number one of the dirt cup i wanted to share with you its status as we stripped it down to a bare frame well, here's a look at the car we crashed at night number one of the Dirt Cup. When we were running in the back, Austin Wheatley got together with another car. He was parked in the racetrack. I could not see him because my line of sight was blocked. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he was just sitting right in front of me. And I probably hit him uh, at a speed of, you know, 80 to 90 miles an hour. So yeah, this thing is pretty rough. Probably the most I have uh, ever damaged a frame. It's twisted up here in the front and you can see it broke right there. Obviously there's no uh, down tube here on the right side. Had to completely cut that off because it was bent inward, which means we could not get our engine out. I told you guys and I was not lying, that was the hardest hit I have ever taken in any race car and I've never felt like what I felt in that moment and had not like panic, but you just you just knew it wasn't good. You know, I knew it wasn't good for Austin because of how I hit him. I knew that I was shooken up because I just like hurt, my whole body hurt. And as I talked about, you have that moment for like an hour or two hours or just the rest of the night where you're just like, what just happened and how did it happen and how could it have been avoided and why do I feel how I feel? It just, it's just weird. You can also see a pretty good dent right there and it bent this whole bar in. Probably hard to see because of the sun, but it actually cracked this tube where the steering box mounts. And the more you just analyze the front, the worse it gets. Like you just don't want to continue looking at this thing. And here's kind of a, another angle from a little bit more up top. And originally we were just going to scrap this car. Like once we wrecked it, I'm like, there's, there's just probably no way this thing can be fixed. You know, we were looking at it, the track and you can just tell it's in rough shape. We start taking it apart. It looks even worse. But then I got to talking with some people at the racetrack and talk to my crew chief, Brian, who's been around for a long time. And he was like, why don't we take it to Rod Tyner down in California, who is a legend on the West Coast in sprint car racing, owns that white and red 83 SA, had tons of big names you know driven his car for years and at one point he even built his own frames i guess and so we decided that we're going to go and drop it off with him and he his words were anything's fixable so he'll definitely take a look at it and see what he can do with this car and i'm not going to argue with an expert if he thinks he can take a, a stab at it and try to get this thing back together i don't know exactly what that process will look like i'm sure it's going to take some work but we're at least going to give it a shot because other than that it's pretty much good for nothing so we're going to see what rod tyner can do with this thing i guess this would be like the before uh, footage. It's all bent to hell, crash, beaten up, bruised, dented, cut up already with the down tube. And uh, we'll see what he's able to make of this thing. But definitely wanted to show you this car uh, as well as my other cars in the past. It did its job, it held up, and it kept me safe during a pretty horrific accident at high speeds. So I do have an update on that car. 24 hours after I shot that clip, it was taken to California and I got a text from my buddy that was talking with Rod Tyner and Rod said, that car's junk. Like it, it is not fixable. I know I was super optimistic in the clip before, like, hey, he said anything is fixable. Well, that car is not. It was just damaged uh, beyond repair, mainly because of all the hits that the cage took where it bent in on both sides, not just one, and really just how that whole area absorbed the impact of the crash. It did its job and protected me, but unfortunately it was too much for the chassis itself to handle, and now it is junk. And also to elaborate, because I know some of you are gonna be wondering, why are you wearing a brake? I'm actually wearing a brace because I still have wrist pain uh, from that night number one crash at Dirt Cup like three weeks ago. I figured it'd go away quite quickly, but it eventually didn't. And I was super stubborn. I just, I didn't want to wear a brace. And then I've been working in the shop a ton and using my hands a lot. And just the, the pressure of being put on it has only made it worse and worse. And now it's getting to the point where it actually hurts and I, I just don't have much movement. So I'm wearing a brace. I'm trying to heal it up quickly so I can uh, get back to, to, to 
feeling a little bit more comfortable with it. It's not gonna hinder my racing at all. I just, I need to wear it so it's a little bit more stable. So that's an update on the car that we crashed on night number one. Now here is an update on the car we crashed on night number two that we fixed to run night number three, came home 11th, but we brought it home, we stripped it down, and we found some bad news. So that's where it's bent. It's bent in the middle of the car. Like really bad. Well, look at it. Look, take your eye, get back here, and look right here. And look, just right here, right under this bar. Oh, wow. See how it goes like this? It's pushed out, that and it's pushed in. That's really bad. No, it is. It's, you can't run that. Maybe the camera can tell, maybe it can't, but this thing is like, this thing's dang near a zigzag line. So dad, what's the update on the car that we crashed on night number two? Uh, the, the car that we crashed on night number two is down at Kent getting fixed. It's getting a front clip and then he's going to fix the, the rear bottom rails and get them straight. So we should be back in business here in a couple weeks. So Kent is KPC. They're located down in Fresno, California. We had the chassis uh, taken down there. Those guys are legit. They're some of the best in the business. They are fixing it like literally they messaged us today that they were working on it. And as my dad said, we should, ha we should have it back here soon. And now the car we have in front of us that we have been working on to get race ready. This is the frame that we ran all of last year. It probably has what, 40 or 45 nights on it? Yeah, probably 45 probably like 45 nights on it. It got bent in the middle of last year. We finished off the season with it. And then during the off season, KPC fixed it. And this was just sitting out at my dad's uh, work for the past couple of months. We were planning on selling it, but then with how 2022 has went, we now have it here in the garage and we've been putting it together as our primary car moving forward, at least for this upcoming weekend. Which leads me to the next part of the video, which is probably the most important news that you guys need to hear on the YouTube channel. Uh, maybe some of you saw this coming with how things have been the past couple of weeks and with Carly's injury, but Unfortunately, uh, Tanner Holmes Racing will not be headed to the Midwest here at the end of July or in August for all the races we had planned. We had like Missouri on the schedule, Kansas, Illinois, Iowa. We were gonna travel all around. 360 and 410 Knoxville Nationals were on that. And it sucks and it, it breaks my heart. It makes me so sad because like going to the Midwest and racing out there and seeing now some tracks that I, I have been to before, like I'd been to Knoxville, I'd been to Lake Ozark, I'd been to I-70, uh, there was probably a couple more Lakeside. I had been to all these tracks now once or twice and the more we go back, the better we are getting. And this year with just like how all the pieces of the puzzle went together, it just, it doesn't make sense for our team to make that trek with where our equipment's at, with us being one man down, Carly is such a big help to our team. And just where we are at as a whole, and it, it's a very tough decision to make because if we really, really wanted to, we could probably like, we'd stretch ourselves thin, we could try to make a trip back there, try to run Knoxville and, and just be there for the Nationals. But um, I just felt like the mature decision for our team was to not go to the Midwest, to not try to rush out there and just make something happen with what we had. Uh, you know, I wanna go to Knoxville Nationals and, and, and try to put our best foot forward. And also part of that was getting experience back there. That's why originally when we lined up our schedule, we were gonna head out there in early July, run Knoxville a couple of times, also hit a couple of other big tracks so we would get that experience and put ourselves in the best spot possible for my first ever 410 Nationals to try to be rookie of the year. Dad, how sad are you we're not going to the Midwest this year? Very sad. Wanted to run, but there's something better. We'll get her, we'll get her next year. Get her next year. And so it's not like we're already looking ahead at next year, but it's just like, that would be that you just, you just push things back and life happens and things get in the way. And, and that's just kind of how it goes. So now we are kind of having to change our schedule. We're going to be out here at home in the Pacific Northwest. One positive I will say is this weekend, we are getting back on track at the Skagit Speedway, which is a place we do have some solid speed. And it's the Bob's and Burgers Summer Nationals, which is a $10,000 payday for the 360 Sprint Car Class on Saturday. A race we originally 
originally weren't planning on running, but now that we're gonna be home, we are gonna head up there and run. So we run Friday, Saturday at Skagit, and then Monday at Banks. And then kind of in the future videos, we will let you guys know where we will be after that. We're kind of just taking it week by week and seeing how things are going. But yeah, $10,000 on the line at a place that we have a lot of laps at. We ran Dirt Cup there. We raced at Skagit with the Outlaws, and I have one 360 win to my name at that uh, track. So this could be a really good opportunity for us to be at home again and have a shot at a really good finish and contend for a win at a high paying show here. But anyway though, that is my update. I wanted to let you guys know the condition of the two cars we crashed at the end of June and you know where we're even getting a third car from to get going again. Luckily by the time we finish working here at the end of the week, which I'll talk about more in the next video, but we will have a car and then we will have a second car uh, all ready to go for a backup for the rest of the year. So we're kind of back reset to where we need to be to still travel a little bit around our area for some of the bigger shows we kind of have coming up. And also you can't forget early September, Labor Day weekend, the World of Outlaws are gonna be here in Washington. And then they have uh, two weekends in California and we're planning on running all of that so even though we're not going to the Midwest we have a ton of big races we need to be ready for and the goal is to kind of build our team up try to build our confidence get going try to win some races so we're ready for when the greatest show on dirt rolls into town so that's most of what I got for today uh, thank you guys for watching I did want to end the video though on a little bit of a lighter note I said we've been working hard the past couple of days in the shop, my dad and myself, and we also had a little bit of extra help from one of my younger cousins named Jaden. He was in the shop with us yesterday putting the 18T together, and I thought this was a fun little segment to kind of wrap up today's show. Wait, are you gonna take a full video? Or? Yeah, do you wanna climb in? Yeah. Here, let's take the wheel off. Yeah, because like... Wait, the video's starting right now? Yeah. What's your name again? Jaden. Jaden. You guys might remember Jaden from the video. It was called. Hang on, I'm gonna find it. I can't believe How can it. you see? Wait, can I hold the camera? You hold it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, hang on. Talk about talk about your race. Um what about race? Am I gonna race or am I just gonna show my strength? Okay, it was called four-year-old's first time driving a go-kart. That was Jaden's video. It has 25,000 views. There's no way. Jaden ran our go-kart just around the house, and that was his first time driving anything with horsepower, and now he's back in the shop. We just, uh, we were just actually in the Wait, pool. Wait, I drive to my own? Oh, man. Yeah, so Jaden, now how old are you? Six. He was four in that video. He's six now, and he's in the shop kind of hanging out with us, uh, helping us work on the 18T. Showing strength, so I'm gonna go work out right now. You're gonna go work out. What's that look like? I'm, he was just using this like it was a dumbbell. Show them your strength. Hi. Get out. Well, yeah, but you gotta, but you gotta actually lift something. You gotta prove it to them. So. Okay, 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 okay. I'll take that back. So remember the name, Jaden Shook, future race car driver in our family. Hasn't ran up his first race yet, but you never know. So he's in the shop helping us. We're teaching him how to do a little bit of a work on the 18T as we build this thing and get it ready for our next race of the season. Okay. Any last words? We're ending the race? Well, any last words for the viewers? Come here. Any last words? Um, have a nice day. <laughs>